Hey friends, DM Khan here. Thanks for coming back to the channel. If it's your first time, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content you're about to see. So I've been gone a while, really just learning the Alta sax and trying to, you know, get better at my craft, which is creating reggae music. And I'm really stoked because I just recently posted this foundation rhythm, which has all real instruments. There's no time adjustments. It's just me, my recordings my twin brothers uh, doing this song and I'm really proud of it. It turned out real great and I'm actually going to have the stems available for sale. But when I was putting together this video, I thought it'd be cool if I kind of stopped and explained some of the concepts as we watch this video. You know, what are you doing? What's the kind of normal stuff? And, uh, you know, go through the signal path and kind of do like a dub tutorial. So we're going to do that and let's just start with um, watching this video and we'll kind of go along and unpack it. So here we go. Okay, that's a good place to start. So we started, I don't know why I said we, I started with everything up. So drums, bass, piano, organ, you know, horns, just like the rhythm starting as if it was like a vocal version. And then we dropped out the drums and then we did a crazy dub on the piano. So we're going to kind of recreate that if I can. And I'll just kind of quickly explain what I have here. So the left hand is the drums and bass, and the right hand is the rhythm section. So we have kick and snare on these two faders, and then we have the rest of the drums. So like overhead, hi-hat, toms, that kind of thing. Um, and so let's just listen to that real quick. Oh, and I have the tambourine there too. So that's that, and then the bass here. Right? And then the right hand is piano guitar. And then organ. And then I have the horns here. Sorry, there's some echo there. Some reverb. The space echo. And then we got the UAD Starlight that's got some ping pong. It's a really cool pedal, by the way. So let's do what I said I was going to do, which is try to recreate this sort of faders up intro. Here we go. drums and then I'm going to be hitting the space echo on the piano right here and let it grow and then okay I think I recreated it so what was that crazy high pitch thing well I've shown this on another video but it's this um, model H910 from Eventide and what it is, is it's a pitch shifter, but really it's a delay and it's actually a dual delay. So um, when you send something to it, I'll just do the piano real quick. Yeah, so it's. So it's super crazy sounding. And what it is, is it's a pitch shifter so but it's a delay so the delay every time it delays it goes up in pitch or down in pitch by however you want and this is an old analog piece of gear that they recreated the plug-in of 
And um, so one, if it was 1.00, that would be like no pitch shifting. It'd be like a mild chorus because as you can see, these numbers are kind of jumping around because it was analog. It's not digital or perfect. So they kind of emulated that. So basically, as it delays, it goes up 0.04, I guess, percent up in pitch. And then it delays again and goes up in pitch. But this one actually goes then into this one, which is a little bit higher pitched. And you can adjust the feedback and all kinds of things. But this is kind of the sweet spot that I found that it does this kind of cool climbing pitch thing. So anyways, that's that. What's next? So I'm doing this kind of cool. Okay, so it's simple, but like all I'm really doing is I'm going, you know, from drum and bass, which would be this. So let's, and then I'm pulling out the drums to just be like, you know, and I gotta raise this. And do some cool like let it grow things and then I'm just doing so you know back and forth rhythm section and then you can do a delay and then bring it back right so and then you can have the space echo grow so yeah, I'm just showing some concepts. Basically, all that I'm really doing here is I'm going like from drum and bass back to rhythm and then back to drum and bass and then back to rhythm. And I know it's like super simple, but if you time things right, you know, you, you can bring in the piano, cut the drums like I did, bring in the piano and then do a delay to kind of transition you back into drum and bass. And that's really kind of the name of the game. So let's keep watching. Drum and bass. You know, cut everything. Added some delay. Back. And then you timed, you know, I timed the drums to come right back in on that, uh, that drum roll, which was kind of cool. And then back to drum and bass. Bringing in the horns for a couple, then back to drum and bass. Back to the piano, rhythm section. Okay, so you, you can kind of also hear I'm doing some filtering. So let's play around. Let's play around with that. So, so if I add some reverb to this, then I can go to the West Finger filter. So I think this is a good a time as any to explain kind of the signal path of the FX. So I have three auxes, well, four, I guess, that I'm using. So the first one is the spring reverb, which you just kind of heard. And then, so that first one is going to the aux, aux, well, it's aux four, but whatever. It's this yellow one. It goes out to the spring reverb and then it comes back on the return channel, which is number three here, but that's kind of irrelevant. What's relevant is the insert. So this little button there actually brings it out of the console to the filter, then back in. But all you need to know is that you're inserting on the return. So you're sending to the reverb, the reverb comes back into the channel on a return, and then before it actually comes back into the computer, it's hitting the insert, which sends out to the filter, back to the return channel, which then goes into the computer and is how you're, you're hearing it. And I know that's confusing, but just, you know, try to draw it or something and it'll make a little bit more sense. So that's the first effects, which is reverb. The second one is the space echo. So let's hear that one. And at Unity Gain, it's 
it's starting to it, it, it slowly kind of saturates and gets more like I like to call it Chewbacca sounding just kind of more gross and you, so yeah anyways how this is working with this fader here is it's I'm sending out on the second aux which goes to the space echo then it comes back to here and I've got some EQ on it but I've also sent some of the signal back to itself. So that's what gets it that regenerative. So the space, space echo doesn't have, it's not on a long decay. It's on like the shortest decay, but because I'm sending it back to itself, it creates that feedback loop. And because it has that EQ on it, it changes the tone of it. You know, it's kind of getting a little bit more brittle and a little more mid-rangey. Right? And I just love that sound. It's it's what dub is, you know? Um, so that's the space echo. And oh, I already kind of showed that. But the third one is the UAD Starlight Echo Start Station, which I have this ping pong delay set up. And it's got a really cool saturation characteristic. I'm really turning it up so you can hear it. Yeah, man. That's a really, really awesome um, delay. So the next one would be that pitch, uh, pitch shifter. So I just have one reverb and two delays and then that pitch shifter, which I already showed you. So that's kind of my signal path setup, And I hope that my explanation of the routing made sense. Um, so here, let's keep watching. So we're back to drum and bass and I'm doing this cool back and forth, you know, hitting the the UAD. And you can kind of see what I'm doing there. That space echo has a lot of wow and flutter because the tape is super old on it. It's like the pitch is going up and down and it just adds a lot of really cool character. But all I've really been doing is what I've been saying I was doing, which is, you know, bringing in the drums and bass and then bringing in one element and then delaying it to, and then dropping it out, you know? So let's, let's do a little bit of that here. Just resetting all my delays, so. Reverb as a transition is cool too. Like this. Just bring it in for one shot. Then I hit the delay. And it gives a really cool, you know, transition. Lots of reverb. Bring in the bass. You know? Oh, I also forgot to talk about the phaser. So. I've got this mutant fly phase, which is a bi-phase, you know, clone basically. Um, but what's cool about this is, okay, so I'm sending the piano to the phaser, which you can hear it, but I'm adding reverb as I turn this these faders up. And then I could do delay from there. So I sent the piano to the phaser and then the phaser, I have a lot of reverb sent to it as I pull these up. Right? And then I sent that to the delay. It 
it's just epic. And then you can do the same. So if I do, let's say I send the piano to the UAD and then I can add some phaser to that and some reverb from, from that. It's nuts. It's, it's cascading your effects from one to the other. When these are down, like you'll hear the phaser, but until you add some reverb to it, then it really starts to come alive. Anyways, I think that's a good place to maybe stop this tutorial. Um, if you want to support me or if you want to get your hands on these stems, you can do that. The link will be in the description. And, you know, it's a way to support me. I don't ask for a lot. And um, I do this because I want to inspire you guys and gals to, you know, get into reggae and get into dub and make some cool reggae. So I'll leave you with that and have a good one. Peace.